Hello, and welcome to another satisfactory video. Today we're going to talk about the alternate recipes in the game. I'm going to go through a couple examples and give a couple suggestions, but ultimately I'm going to show you what you need to evaluate each recipe on your own. Also, these are just suggestions, so if you find a particular situation where something that I say is bad is good, go for it. Play the way you want to play. So, if you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe. I make satisfactory videos and plan on making many more in the future. So, let's go ahead and talk about how to unlock alternate recipes. So, quite simply, you're going to be looking for these drop pods around the map. And each drop pod is going to require something different. So, this needs power. Sometimes you need one of the materials. I have a power line right here, you just connect it up. Not all of them need power, and not all of them need materials. Some do need both, though. So now that this is powered, it's operational, we can open it up. And take out the hard drive. Then you're going to want to go to your MAM. What I like to do is I just like to build one right here. And... You go to the hard drive setting and research. And then we gotta make, wait 10 minutes. I'm not gonna wait, make you wait 10 minutes though. After you're done researching, you can return to your MAM and then you're gonna be presented with three different options. So I got a couple here. Your options are gonna depend on what tier you have unlocked. So if you only have the early tiers, you're only gonna get early stuff. If you have a later tier, you're gonna get later stuff. Um, I have most of the tiers unlocked. Well, not most, all of them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I think this one's the best one of these three, but now that we know how to unlock them, I'm gonna go get into some specifics about what you should be looking for. So the first thing you want to look for in a recipe is, does it make something easier to make? And the perfect example of this is the cast screw recipe. This takes five iron ingots, turns it into 20 screws. At 12 and a half per minute and 50 out. The normal screw recipe, you need to turn iron ingots into iron rods and then feed those into iron rods making screws and you get it's one to one for an ingot to a rod and then one to four for the screws but it's also one to four for the screws here. 50 divided by 12 and a half is four. So the cast screw recipe is a great recipe. So you want to look for recipes that make things easier and um, you know still preserve the amount of materials needed. A recipe that might trick you early on, it, it actually did trick me early on, is the bolted screw recipe. So reinforced iron plates normally take 30 per minute and 60 per minute to make five per minute. And then over here, this is the alternate bolted iron plate, 90 per minute, 250 per minute for 15. And you might say, oh, this makes reinforced plates faster, that's great. But let's go back over here and say, okay, but what if I just have three of these machines? I need 90 per minute and 180 screws per minute. And what you're going to see over here is we have the 90 iron plates per minute but 250 screws per minute. So you're essentially wasting iron, which, you know, there's plenty of iron, right? I do believe you save a little bit of power, but it's just much easier and much more efficient to use the basic recipe instead of this one. Definitely do the math on your recipes and evaluate if they are actually good or not. So something else that you want to look for is if you are turning a higher tier input into a lower tier input and what I mean by that is we can take a look at this recipe right here so this is copper alloy ingot this is a pretty good recipe it takes copper and iron and turns it into more copper so this is something that you're gonna to want to look for because iron is significantly more abundant than copper so combining the two getting more copper is advantageous because normally the copper recipe, it's it's a one-to-one, -one, 30 to 30. But here, you get 50 in, 100 out with 
you know, just a little bit of iron. And you really shouldn't have trouble finding iron. The converse of this, the, a bad version of this recipe, would be the uh, the Caterium wire, which takes Caterium, which is significantly harder to find, into wire. And normally wire you make with copper, which is very easy to find. There's actually also an iron wire recipe right here, which allows you to turn iron into wire. So um, if you're low on copper, you can even do that. The ultimate example of this is the pure recipes. So anytime you see one of these pure ingot recipes, or there's also pure crystal, wet concrete, what these will do is you add water and you know whatever input, and then it turns it into more of that input. So we can turn 15 copper ore into 37 ingots, just adding some water, which is great because water is effectively infinite. So long as you can place a water extractor on a body of water, you're good to go. The only thing is these do cost a bit of power. So like this is 30 megawatts. If you go to like our smelter, there's only four and you only get seven and a half more. So that is definitely a concern when using the pure recipes. But if you're, if you have a big mega base and power is not, you know, too much of a hassle for you, the pure recipes are definitely the way to go. So something else that you're going to want to look for is does it increase the efficiency of the already existing items that are going in? So a great example of this is the steel ingot recipe. So we have 45 iron in, 45 coal in for 45 ingots out. And then we have the alternate of that, which is the solid steel ingot, which has only 40 iron ingots, not ore, uh, going in. So you do have to smelt these, but they'll only 40 coal in for 60 ingots out. So this is going to increase your output by 50%, but you do have to uh, smelt those ingots. But I would say that this is a great recipe because you know, you're really gonna be limited by the amount of coal that you have because again, iron is so infinitely abundant, almost infinitely abundant. So this is a fantastic recipe um, for, you know, your mint game. If you see this once you unlock steel, this is definitely something that you should pick up. So those are a few things to keep in mind when selecting alternate recipes. There are a total of 89 alternate recipes. So within a certain game, you're going to be exposed to different ones on each playthrough, which is, you know, an exciting little thing. Also, I've left a link in the description to the Satisfactory Wiki page for a full listing of all of them if you want to take a closer look. But definitely take your time when, you know, you get to that, those three options, because you might have to make a hard decision. I hope you found this guide interesting and useful. If you're looking for other guides for Satisfactory or guides for Dyson Sphere Program, be sure to subscribe and check out my channel. I also plan on making a couple more satisfactory video guides. I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash billythedoor. I'd love to see you come hang out. And with that, that's all for me. Take care.